Hi everyone, my name's Jen Gupta and I'm a PhD student at the Jodrell Bank Centre for Astrophysics up in Manchester. Yay! Yes! My friends are in the audience. Before I get started, my parents are also in the audience, so mum and dad, I would like to apologise in advance for anything rude I say in the next five minutes. I'm the only one out on tonight's bill. I'm the only researcher here who's not from UCL. So I figured my set might as well be the odd one out as well. So I'm turning tonight's theme on its head and I'm gonna talk about when stars aren't stars. I thought I'd start by thinking about what a star could be. So I followed that well-known traditional research method and I looked on Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia tells me that star is an, anagra is an acronym for a lot of different things. So you've gotta be a bit careful. You don't want to mix up the Society for Ticket Agents and Retailers <laughs> with the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. <laughs> that might get a little bit awkward. But I'm an astronomer, so I'm here to talk to you about when stars in the night sky aren't stars. The obvious ones are planets. If you've looked up and seen a bright star recently, it's probably Jupiter. If you can get away from the city out into the countryside, you might even be able to see Uranus. <laughs> See, it never gets old for astronomers. <laughs> but there are other things in the night sky that are disguising themselves as stars. Oh no! I've given it away. <laughs> There's one in this picture! <laughs> that this one isn't a star by looking at the different types of light that it emits, like x-rays or radio waves. And so when we look at this with radio telescopes, we see this. This was taken using a network of radio telescopes in the UK called Merlin. At the top bit, there's a really bright bit. That's the centre. Uh, shooting out from the middle is what astronomers like to call the death ray. <laughs> I say astronomers, I mean me. Um, most people call it a jet. <laughs> but when we look around the sky with our radio telescopes, we see lots of death rays out there. But when we go back to visible light and see where these death rays are, some of them look like they're in stars, but some of them look like they're in galaxies. So what's going on? Well, these objects are what we call active galaxies. I know what you're thinking. I do not mean bars of chocolate, dressed in lycra, working up a sweat on a treadmill. <laughs> Admire my paint skills. Actually, I made this in a program called GIMP, but asking you to admire my GIMP skills probably wouldn't go down too well. <laughs> so what we mean by active galaxies are galaxies that are emitting a lot more energy than your typical boring galaxy like our own Milky Way. And the extra energy in these galaxies is coming from their centre or their nucleus, so we call them active galactic nuclei because energy center galaxy would just sound a little bit silly. And astronomers really like their acronyms. ECG is already taken up by medicine. Damn those real doctors. Astronomers are pretty bad at naming things. My favorite ones are the ones where they talk about size. There's a telescope in Chile that's called the Very Large Telescope. <laughs> they're building a bigger one, so they're gonna call it the Extremely Large Telescope. The American equivalent of Merlin is just called the Very Large Array. I could go on. I guess astronomers can't afford sports cars. Actually, the Very Large Array, or the VLA as we call it, has recently undergone a massive upgrade, so the people in charge of it have decided it needs a new name. I think maybe they're just sick of their Dutch colleagues calling it blah, which Wikipedia reliably informs me is a Dutch word for a type of custard. <laughs> My friend thinks it should be renamed the TFKATVLA, the telescope formerly known as the VLA. <laughs> but Tufkapla doesn't mean anything in any language I've come across. And as I said, astronomers like really boring, obvious names, so maybe they'll just call it something like, I don't know, the completely upgraded new telescope. <laughs> completely. <laughs> Back to my active galactic nuclei, or my AGN. So what astronomers realized is that AGN are found in all kinds of galaxies, and you move them far away, and the light from the center, the death ray, overcomes the galaxy, and we just see stars. <laughs> but the thing with AGN, 
as with so many things in life, is that it's what's on the inside that counts. So in every galaxy, we think there's a supermassive black hole. And in most galaxies, it's just sitting there. It's not really doing much. It's hanging out, being boring. But in AGN, it's a monster. And I'm talking like cookie monster kind of monster here. <laughs> so in AGN, there's all this dust and gas swirling around the black hole. And the AGN, the black hole, is eating up anything that comes near it. Actually, that sounds like every student ever. <laughs> so as all this stuff moves around the black hole, it heats up and it emits lots of energy. And then there are these jets, the death rays. These are made up of particles, like electrons, traveling really, 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 really fast. And as they travel really, 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 really fast, they emit lots of energy, mostly as radio waves. What we don't really know is how they form or why we don't see these jets in all AGN. So we pray to the goddess of magnetic fields and do ritual dances <laughs> in the hope that she'll enlighten us. But astronomers can't really dance. It's a little bit like watching John Sargent and Anne Widdicombe <laughs> attempting to tango. <laughs> so we still don't know what's going on. Just to finish, I want to show you my favourite ever radio picture of an AGN. When this was released, it was described as astronomers discover spectacular structure in distant galaxy. And as I zoom in, I think you'll agree, that's pretty spectacular. Thank you.